Hello and welcome to the third and final video on Christopher Wright's trilogy, Knowing God Through the Old Testament. The first video was on knowing the Spirit through the Old Testament. The second was on knowing the Father through the Old Testament. And this final video will be on knowing Jesus through the Old Testament. Wright's wish is for us to know Jesus better with a rich biblical background. So let's get started. Wright's first chapter is Jesus in the Old Testament story. He moves us to Matthew's genealogy. And Matthew breaks his genealogy into three main sections to show us what's important to him about Israel's story. He starts with Abraham to David, David to the exile, the exile to the Messiah. From Abraham to David, there's a sequence of sin, election, redemption, covenant, and inheritance. And then from David to the exile, there's national downfall and the prophets are rising up, encouraging Israel, in fact, demanding that they turn back to their God who has had mercy on them and who alone has life. And then from exile to Messiah, we see that the Israelites did suffer for their sins, but there is hope. The Messiah is coming with national restoration and repentance, and the whole earth will come and stream to Jerusalem to worship Yahweh, the one true God. This is the story of which Jesus, who we have come to know and love, is the climax. Jesus is also the fulfillment of the promise God made in the Old Testament. And this is the second chapter, Jesus and the Old Testament promise. Wright makes sure that we understand there's a big difference between prediction and promise. Promise is very relational, and he gives us a story to demonstrate that. A father saw that his son needed transportation, and so he promised him that he would give him something like a horse. But later on, he actually ends up giving him a very nice car. The intention was kept. Promises are relational. Even though the son didn't get a horse, he got something much better and transportation was still accommodated for. So we see that the promise might have looked different than it was at the beginning, but it was based off of the father and son's relationship and that was what was important. Wright also gives the example of a rocket. A rocket going from each stage in history to the next and promise and fulfillment, promise and fulfillment, and it finds its final destination in Jesus. Meanwhile, the fuel from this rocket, so to say, is always the same. It's always the original promise, the original basis of everything God has ever done. Once again, finding its climax, finding its final destination in Jesus. One example that Wright gives of this stage fulfillment idea is that with the seed theme in scripture. God promises to Abraham and Sarah that they will have a seed. It starts with the fulfillment with Isaac, and then with Israel, and then with the Messiah and the church, which is his ultimate focus, as Paul makes clear. He also says that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Not only are all the promises of God yes and amen in Jesus, but all of us are represented in Jesus as well. This is a topic of Wright's next chapter, Jesus and his Old Testament identity. Wright focuses on the baptism account in which a voice from heaven comes and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, this voice actually quotes from three Old Testament sources, Psalm 2, Isaiah 42, and Genesis 22. In all of these passages, there is one with a representative role. Jesus is the one who comes to fulfill these representative roles. Where humanity and Israel has failed, Jesus will succeed. 
He brings his worship to the Father through obedience to him, an obedience that leads to death. Jesus' obedience unto death is a center of his mission, how he is going to bring blessing to all nations. And we are to be partakers in this mission, Wright argues, a mission that is a mission in wholeness, with justice and compassion, enlightenment and knowledge and liberation. We are to bring the law to all nations through our words and our actions. Jesus is fulfilling the role of the servant, Messiah, Son of Man in the scriptures, amongst other roles. And we have been given a continuation of his ministry today. The bridge between God's call of his people and mission accomplished is ethics, Wright argues. And this is a subject of his next chapter, Jesus and his Old Testament values. Jesus is completely in line with the Old Testament scale of values. God comes first, people matter more than things, and needs are always above claims. And we do the good things we do for God, not just out of some obligation we don't understand, but because of God's grace towards us. We should be grateful and we should do things out of love. We also should know that He knows what's best for us. We are to imitate God in His loving character and be missional. Our focus is to save the world. This is what we are to be doing and engaging in. This is the ethic of Jesus and is completely in line with the ethic of the Old Testament. He gave a prophetic critique as well when it was needed, social, economic, spiritual, and political, and we are obligated to do the same. Most amazingly, we know this Jesus as God with us. And this is Wright's last chapter, Jesus and his Old Testament God. Jesus came doing things that only Yahweh did in the Old Testament. He's described as creator, ruler, judge, and savior. Jesus is doing what scripture always said will happen when God comes. And so we can know that this Jesus we see described in the New Testament is God with us. His followers were always addressing him in prayer as they would pray to Yahweh, calling him Lord and Master. And we are to do the same. Jesus did, does, and will always do what only God can do, as Wright says. I hope this last video in Christopher Wright's trilogy, Knowing God Through the Old Testament, has helped you to know Jesus just a little bit better. But seriously, pick up Wright's trilogy and read it. It's completely worth your time, and it will help you to know God more.